Hi, welcome back to uh, Twitch. Uh, we're in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent. And I'm Julian, I'm a tech evangelist with AWS focusing on AI and machine learning. And uh, today, for this session, I'm joined by uh, Yoni and Yasser. Thank you guys for, hey. uh, for being here. And we are going to talk about a cool service called Amazon Translate. So Amazon Translate, as you can imagine, is a translation service. It was launched uh, last year at reInvent. And we have some new toys for you guys. So um, before we dive into the new stuff, uh, tell us a little bit about Amazon Translate. W why does it matter? Why should all the good people out there care? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a really important <laughs> question. Um, so you know, local has become the new normal, right? Customers today expect personalized experiences. They want to see content that's you know, relevant to them, in some cases created by their community. And increasingly so, they also expect content in their own native language. Right. So whatever they're doing, you know, whether it's an e-commerce transaction, whether it's just reading content on the web, they want to do it in their own language. And so we have a bunch of indications, both from our own internal customers, which we know we've been using translation in Amazon right. for a very long time, and externally from a bunch of research, that today people are telling us, hey, if I can't read this, I will not buy this. I will not interact with this content. And so more and more we're seeing that machine translation is a core tool and is becoming more and more important to external customers as it has been for Amazon's own international expansion. OK, so as you said, it's been around for decades, yeah. right? Um, I mean, remember all those PC tools that supposedly could uh, you know, translate yeah, yeah. pretty much or, or not. So uh, wh how, how is Amazon Translate different? What, what has changed in the last few years that make machine translation now a, a more efficient uh, technology? Yeah. So you know, over the last about two years, give or take, there's been a revolution, literally, and I'm not exaggerating, there's been a revolution in the space of machine translation. So historically, we had what we refer to as statistical machine translation engines. Yeah. This is what we started off at Amazon with when we started investing in machine translation in 2014. But then over the last two years, give or take again, we started productizing neural machine translation, which is a totally new approach to basically doing any kind of machine learning using deep learning, but also specifically to machine translation. Uh, you know, to give you just a, a quick piece of detail on that, basically when we think about neural machine translation, these are algorithms that are inspired by the way that the human brain processes. Right. Well, first it learns information not and then mine, it processes but the yeah. information. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> not mine either. Um, and so they're able to provide to produce translations that are more natural and more fluent and more accurate than what we've ever seen before. And the main meaning, what this actually means for Amazon and for our AWS customers, is that now it's a good tool for us to use in expanding many, many use cases and reaching additional uh, customers and customer segments. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, Amazon Translate was uh, launched last year with, uh, with a bunch of uh, languages. So let's, let's talk about the new stuff, right? Yeah. I'm all about the new stuff. So uh, what, are, what have you guys built uh, recently on, on Translate that we should talk about and uh, it, what's coming in the next couple of days? Maybe yeah. hopefully today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, last week we had announced that we're adding another eight languages to the service. Yeah. So we already had support before that um, for, what is it, 13 languages, so English to 12 other languages. And then last week we added another eight languages and expanded the amount of language pairing. So if you think about it, French to German, we refer to that as a language right. pairing. So we expanded the amount of possible language pairing to 417 wow. language pairings. So, so pretty much all combinations. Pretty are much all combinations, yeah. less three that we believe are not yet state-of-the-art, so we haven't released them yet. Okay. This is sort of a tenet that we've tried to, to accommodate. And actually today, we're also going to announce that we're introducing custom terminology, which is a really big deal. Customers have been asking for it basically from the time that we launched the service. Custom terminology is a capability for customers to define how specifically named entities that are relevant to their particular situation are going to be treated by the engine. Okay. So if you think about um, you know, your product names, uh, your model names, your person names, character names in games, in transcription and translation type of use cases, uh, all of these customers will be able to say, hey, I want you to treat this specific named entity in the following way. 
What we know from customers is that the vast majority of customization use cases, the vast majority of problems that customers are looking to solve with that, with customization, are actually how this proprietary uh, terminology right. is treated. Yeah. So we think this is going to be huge for customers, at least we hope so. So 21 languages and 417 language pairs. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a lot, right? It's it's much. I guess it's much more challenging than building one single, let's say, English to French or French to English right. uh, model. So, tell us a little bit about the work involved here. What what maybe for a, a little bit from a machine learning perspective, what does it mean to train uh, on 21 different languages and hundreds of language pairs? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the sheer number of language pairs that you have you have to have the ability to be able to build these systems automatically, obviously, and to make sure that they are of highest quality that you can actually launch them. So, um, you know, we, we uh, apply machine learning all the way through the process, process of actually creating the training data, filtering out the training data, and actually building the systems that go into building these machine translations. Um, you know, and, and then verifying them through the quality, uh, uh, that making sure that they are actually of the, Quality is obviously important because uh, you know language is what humans learn from a very early age. Yeah. So we're, I guess, we're all very sensitive to something that's slightly off, right? So how, um, I guess I'm curious about how we measure the quality of a, of a model. How, how do we? It, it, it's both objective and subjective. So when do you guys decide? Okay, this pair is ready to go, and this one isn't. So we do a bunch of evaluations. Uh, we run algorithmic evaluations. There's a bunch of algorithmic sure. approaches for yeah, how you might evaluate. Scores low scores, yeah, yeah okay. there's several of them. Uh, one of our science team members um, and leaders has actually come up with their own algorithm. So we use these too. But really what matters is what humans think of it, right? Because we're producing translation yeah. not for these algorithms, we're producing translation for human consumption. And so we really put a lot of emphasis on having humans, professional translators, actually evaluate our translations against professional translation outputs. Um, okay. You know, we have a certain scale that we apply to, a, we probably don't have time to get into it right now, but generally speaking, we have this core tenet, and by the way, the reason why today we're at 21 languages and not 50, and we could be at 50 today, is because we're absolutely convinced that when we release a language, it needs to be state-of-the-art yeah. in terms of quality. So this is what we're doing uh, with these new languages as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I tried some of the new languages, and you know we're not going to go through the full list, but uh, you know we have uh, Hebrew and Indonesian and, and Turkish and Finnish, and and those are probably pretty difficult languages, right? Uh, to 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 get right. Yeah. And you know I tried translating maybe from you know Russian to Hebrew to Indonesian to English to French back to Russian. You know that's the ugly torture test. That uh, you should try. You're mean, man. Yeah, I'm mean. Uh, and well, the reason you didn't get an email from me is because it worked. Okay. And I was kind of happy with that. <laughs> Way, to go, like, Way to go, man. Way to go. You did a good job. You did a good job. <laughs> so, uh, so the, that cool new feature today, custom terminology, yeah. uh, is is going to be available in a few hours. Uh, can you maybe give us a few examples, a few customer examples where this really makes the difference between uh, a state-of-the-art translation and a a crappy translation? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, it's generally meant to, to help customers handle named entities. I actually want to, if you don't mind, I actually sure. want to show you a little bit of Yeah, of please, if you works. have a demo, let's go into yeah, the yeah, demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, can, can we transition to my screen? Are we seeing my screen? Yeah. Uh, not that one. I think we're seeing a presentation. Yeah, which is not my screen, just a sec. All right. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> did somebody hijack our, uh, our screen? All right. Is it well, the other? Should we use the other cable? No, it's... Aha. Let's try All this right. one. OK, so let's... Oh, it's so right, short. You can just move. <laughs> right. Okay, let's try that. This is all being rehearsed 20 times, as you can <laughs> see. But it's the fun of being live, right? So stay with us for a, for a demo of the new features in Amazon Translate. How about now? Are we going to see it now? 
All right, let's see the screen. I'm seeing something on my screen. Something is happening. No? Well, let's, um, why don't we then talk about okay, uh, the, right, the right. example? Okay, we'll do a demo if we, later If we on. can't get the screen sure up. what's going on here. Um, so, generally, the way that this would work, I really like, and the, the example that I was on the show is with a brand called Amazon Family. So, I, I have a couple of diaper wares at home. Yeah. Um, and this Amazon Family thing is for Prime members. Amazon offers a bunch of discounts, for example, like 20% of diapers. Now, in France, this brand is referred to as Amazon Famille. Okay, okay. Fair, fair enough. Now, <laughs> if, if I took that term, Amazon Family, and just input it into the translation service, what it would do is it, was, it would output the correct French translation, which is Famille Amazon. Mm, okay. So right, the sure, yeah. Amazon Famille is not the correct sure. French translation, sure, sure. right? Do you speak French, by the way? I, I think I'm French, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't apologize, though. Um, so it, it would say basically Famille Amazon, right? Now, if I give it some more context, for example, something like, have you ever used Amazon Family? Right. The engine would actually identify that the term Amazon Family is something that should not be translated at all. And what it would do, it would translate everything up to that term and would leave Amazon Family in English. Okay, sure. But that clearly is not what our team in France is looking for, right? Sure. They're saying, hey, we need you this localized local to say Amazon Family. Exactly. And so with custom terminology, what they could do is they could upload a CSV doc, which has the first column as the English source, Amazon family. Right. And then the French target would be Amazon family. So it's not just single words. It could be yes. expressions, it can be, idioms. It could be a screen. Okay. A All screen. Right. We highly, highly recommend that it only be leveraged for named entities, sure. things that are unambiguously true sure. that you would always want sure. to override. Yeah. Um, and so basically, they would then call the service, Amazon Translate Service, with this terminology that they gave whatever name to. And what they would see is that they would see the French translation. And in the end, instead of saying Amazon Family, it would now say Amazon Famille, okay. because the override was applied. Now, really important is that this feature, we see uh, the feedback that we have been getting from customers is that it basically serves the vast majority of their customization needs and it is absolutely free to use. So there's no charge that we're applying uh, to this. That's always good there's to hear. There's no engine training, no model training. Yeah. Anyone can use it. You don't yeah. need any Zero engineering. Zero machine learning skills required. That's Zero machine learning If you skills. can write a CSV file. Exactly. Man, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> a CSV we, file. You, know, you can use. Uh, you that's can actually use, meant for me as well. Yeah, you can I, use custom terminology. Yeah, yeah exactly. OK, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, so I guess let's take a few more minutes to uh, maybe you know open the hood and and talk about how this works so we're not going to betray any big secrets it's not just the three of us right um, and which is fine so tell us a little bit about the building blocks uh, from a machine learning perspective what does it take to build that kind of service sure and um, so normally when you uh, do the translation without the terminology it just uh, the what we train the system is to be able to translate it to the best of its ability within the context. So as Yoni mentioned, the, the custom terminology is an override mechanism that you as the customer control what a specific uh, named entity should be translated. Uh, and you know, we go there, after we translate, we go into the, um, the first pass of the translation and figure out what needs to be replaced and we replace it with the translation that you provided. And we make sure that it actually makes sense in that in that particular context. Right. As well. uh, so that's uh, that's the basic uh, uh, methodology that we are using. And you know, under the hood, you know, it, we use the same kind of term, you know, technology that we do for our own translations. But it's guided now. But what you provide as a customer, as your preferred translation for that phrase. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I just want to remind everybody that uh, a little while ago we launched, or uh, we actually released an open source project called AWS Sockeye mm. that lets you, uh, it's built on a, an LSTM architecture and it lets everybody train their own models. So if for some reason um, you can't find the language pair that, uh, that, you, uh, that you need and in Amazon Translate, uh, I recommend you take a look at it. It's on GitHub, AWS Sockeye, 
And I know I tried it. it if you have a data set, uh, just fire up uh, a GPU instance or a few GPU instance. Um, it could be EC2, it could be on SageMaker, and, and just just run something, you know, yeah. build, build a model. Uh, and, um, and you'll see it's not so easy to get to the level of quality that we're talking here. Yeah. But it's still an option, right? In, in part, it's, it's definitely still an option. In part, I think we owe Amazon Translate's quality to the fact that we've open source Sockeye and we've seen a bunch of contribution from the scientific community to this open source model. Um, you know, we definitely see that it's extremely, extremely hard, which is natural to outperform Amazon Translate. Uh, but like you say, if there's a language pair that is not yet supported or any kind of scenario like this, you can definitely try. Yeah, all right. Yep. So it's good to have that good additional to have that weapon in your, in yeah. your arsenal. Yeah. So, um, so how, do we, how do we get started with Amazon Translate? How do all those good people out there try it now? Yeah, so you could use, uh, you could use the CLI uh, to call the service. We're talking about literally or any kind of other AWS SDK. We're literally looking at three lines of code in Python. And of course, if you don't want to use SDKs, if you're not familiar with the AWS CLI, you can always just use the console. If you're thinking about uh, integrating the service and powering a multilingual application, you know, obviously you'll probably want to go the route of programmatically accessing the service. Uh, but you can always try it out at first uh, with console with no code skills at oh, all. Oh yeah, it's yeah. If if you can type text, you know, it's a, and it it, it has a kind of real time translation now in the yeah. console. So yeah. uh, you can literally type and see the translation happening in real time. And and, and now it, you can also test the custom terminology feature. Yeah, and you so can, you'll immediately yeah. be able to see all yeah. the, if, the overrides. If you need to translate, I don't know, uh, engine parts or uh, medical terms or exactly. legal terms. You know all those uh, all those complex jargons that are out there, exactly. and they, that actually defeat uh, general purpose translation. Now you can get to the same level of quality with custom terminology, yeah. and you can do this in 21 languages. Right? True, so that's pretty Very awesome. True. Very true. All right, uh, I think we're out of time. So hopefully you learned a few things about Amazon Translate. So go and try it out on uh, on AWS today. Uh, Yoni, thank you very much. Thanks, Julian. Thanks for showing up. Great to be here. <laughs> thank you yes, very sir. Much. Pleasure. Yeah. And oh, um, and we have more sessions for you uh, today and tomorrow and the next day. So stay with us. Thank you.